This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Newton versus Newton. I noticed that you all have been married for 10 years and that there's an almost a 10-year age difference between you all. And you are here, Miss Newton, seeking the truth. Tell me why you're here. Well, Your Honor, um, I'm here because I want to find out if he's, if, if he's cheating on me. Okay. Because I see signs of the earring that I found in his car. Okay. He said... I will presume it wasn't your earring. No, Your Honor. Is that the earring? Yes, ma'am. What, now, you... It wasn't earrings or... A two. It's a, it's a set. Well, Miss Newton, if he found them, you wouldn't have seen them before, right? Yes. So it's very possible they found him and wanted to give him to you, right? Well, that's what he said. He found him to give him to me. But you don't believe him. But I don't believe him. All of that has made you think something's going on here. Yes. Your woman's intuition is going ding, 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 yes. ding. <laughs> All right, Mr. Newton, she said she got <laughs> some things she's seeing. What's she seeing? Well, I've never seen the earrings, never in life. I didn't even know where these earrings even came from. Okay. But did you find them? Yes, I found them in my car. And when you found them, what did you do? Yeah, I just gave her these earrings so that I make sure that she was cool with the situation. She and, wasn't. And she, and she wasn't. Uh-huh. And so I you, you didn't try to hide it. You didn't try to... You came... No. Hey, I found these earrings. I okay, found these Mr. earrings. Mr. Cutler, how some earrings gonna get in your car and let somebody drop them or left them? That's probably what happened. But what he said who was... Is, who dropped the earrings? There it is. Who dropped them? Nobody. I don't know where these earrings came from. I've never even seen these earrings a day in my life. Okay, so what woman was in your car? Right. If no it woman. wasn't her, what other woman was in your car? There's no other woman that that's part. ever been in my car. So, I, I don't have any answers. Well, I think I'm still, I, but I think I'm still right, Mr. Cut. You always think you're right. That's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have these warning signs. Yes. Is there anything in your relationship that highlights or make these warning signs Well, we had important? difficulties in the past. Can yeah. you tell me about the past cheating? Well, I was on my way to uh, my grandmother's funeral and a situation happened. He's supposed to went with me, but he, he couldn't go. But while I was out there, I had the same feeling. And when I came back, it was a lady I knew and they had did some things, you know, and she called and let me know. Like, she cried and told me what was going on. And she was sorry about what? it. Okay. What was she sorry about? Because they had sex. Oh. oh. And this well, is somebody you knew? Yes. And she knew you were away at your grandmother's funeral? Yes. All right. What did you say to him? Well, I asked him and he told me no at first and then when she called and told me the truth, that's when he told the truth. When you get that, when you get that feeling, it's hard to, uh, to let go and trust again. So, I want to know if you're still cheating. So, now you are having these warning signs and that intuition is going ding, 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 yes, again. Honor. You just haven't gotten a confession. Yes. All right. And that's what you're here for. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Newton, you made a mistake in the past. Yes, Your Honor. How did this happen? Well, she was away... And, you know, I was feeling kind of lonely. I was down at the time or whatever. I mean, she's at her grandmother's funeral. Right. You're right. This happened, and at first you lied about it. Yes. But then you decided to come clean? Yes, sir. Okay, and what did you tell her? Now, I wanted to be able to go forward with our relationship, so I told her the truth. How did you all even get she, she together? She was coming over to the house while my wife was gone. So, were y'all already having conversation before she left about, no. I like you, you like me? No. Y'all just hooked up? Pretty much, yeah. Woof. Okay. You all got married, and you've been married ever since, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no way in the world that you would do something else to jeopardize that, right? No, Your Honor. But, well, why do you believe he's cheating now? He's saying, ain't no way I would jeopardize this, but you think it is. Because I went upstairs in the house, and he wasn't up there. So... I called his phone, he didn't answer. I called him again and he answered. I said, where you at? He said, at the store. I said, you ain't at no store because I'm at the store. Uh He said, no, I just left the store. I'm walking up the street. I had had family members sitting on a bench to watch uh, one of the houses. So I told him to stay right there. And why'd you do that? Because I wanted to see if he was at the the neighbor's house. So you thought something was going on. Right. So when he told me he was at the store, I went to the store. And I'm riding around the corner and I'm coming up the street. I say, I don't see you there either. And I can hear him running. I can oh, hear him running. Oh, through the phone. Because you're still you on the hear phone the with him. Right. I can hear him running. Okay. So the family member was like, oh, he just came out of there. He just came out of there. And it was a, a single woman's house. 
She got three things going on at one time. She's got surveillance going on. Video surveillance, audio <laughs> surveillance, yeah, she, and she, remote surveillance with a what, friend. Right, right. And she's being an eye spy on the side. I'm like, you got this thing covered. <laughs> that's because, you know, when, when, when it happened the first time, it's, it's hard to, to trust again. So that's why I'm like that. So he kept telling me he didn't do nothing. And he, he you know, and she said she didn't do nothing, but I want to know. What you doing at her house? <laughs> Well, this is the first time I ever went over to the girl's house. You know, I, I met her in the apartment complex uh, a while back. So you were over at this friend's house hanging out? Hanging out. Okay, this female friend. Yes. Why'd you lie? The reason why I lied, Your Honor, because I didn't want her to come over there to the house. You know what I mean? I was just trying to, just trying to make sure that nothing would happen to this lady. So you were more concerned with the lady than you were with what your wife no, would No, no, that's not what I'm saying, Your Honor. Well, nothing gonna happen to her. Something gonna happen to you, though, if you keep going over there. Right. If you ain't where you ain't supposed to be, that won't be a problem. Right, because I told him if the shoe was on the other foot and I came out of single man house, how would you feel? Right. And how would you feel? I would be upset. Yeah, you would. You'd be be tight. So, Ms. Newton, have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Yes. Um... Uh, one time, uh, I had picked him up at 3 o'clock in the morning from his friend's house. Not the same friend, is it? No, it's a different one. Oh, okay. Friend's <laughs> and I wonder why he was taking so long. So he came outside, and I put my hand in his pants, and it was silky. So I'm like, why does your stuff feel like you had a cup Wait, on? Oh, wait. You said it was lotion. Okay, we got a, we got demonstrations here. Show okay. Them. What, what we got uh-huh. here? I have the lotion, and I have the lube. Okay, so what was it that you thought you felt on his his private? Oh, lubricant. I, I know what I feel. Okay, okay, lubricant. And when you asked him about that, what did he say? He said, well, lotion. Okay, so, so you... So I told him, lotion don't feel like that, honey. So you got... <laughs> and you can feel the difference. You got lubricant and you got lotion. I, I need to see that for myself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, you know, see, I... That's the way it felt right there. Yeah, there's a difference. There is a difference. I'm gonna take her word for it. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cutler, get in the game. Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. And then I went in the house. Oh, I'm, I'm there's mad. more. I, I, you know, I got upset, so I went in the house and I asked, who, who in here messed with my husband? And oh. one girl sitting in the, in, in the kitchen, the other one sitting on the floor, she's like, oh, no, that ain't me. My husband right there. So I'm looking, and the, the big girl, she ain't saying nothing, but, fro- you know, she was froze. So I was mad. Did anybody say he was with anybody? No, they didn't say nothing. They was just quiet. All right, Mr. Newton, you got a detective for a wife, okay? <laughs> for real. And... She sticks her hand down your pants and feels your private and feels what she says is lubricant, not lotion. How do you explain that at 3 o'clock in the morning? Your Honor, I don't remember her sticking my, my, her hands down my oh, pants. Oh, I stuck my hand in I stuck my hand You in don't remember that? No. I, I, I stuck my hand in his pants. I, I gotta say, I think that's the kind of thing I would remember. You Good. know, if I came out of the house <laughs> and... I stuck my hand in his pants. In fact, if you call me at 3 in the morning to come pick you up, you remember that, too. Yeah. Because we'd have a conversation. I mean, you had this discussion. She just jams her hand down your pants. <laughs> she didn't say she jammed her hand down there. <laughs> and you let her do that. You don't have any recollection of that? No, I don't. Do you have a recollection of her asking you what took so long? No. Do you have a recollection of her going in the house? No. Okay, were well, y'all together? You have a recollection of being married? Were <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did happen? Well, she, look, she called me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I told her, well, you, can you come get me then? So she came down to the house. I didn't have no problem with her coming out. If I was cheating, Your Honor, won't you think I would be well, not letting her, trying to let her in the house? So I let her in the house. I told her to come on in. You know, I don't got nothing to hide from you, babe. So she came in and whatever. She was telling me, well, I, I think it's about time for you to come home and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, it's time for me to go home. Let's go. So on the way going to, to the house, he was saying, oh, I wanted to go to the hospital to check you to make sure that you wasn't doing it. And I was like, I'm cool. I'm all up for that. She wanted to take you to the I hospital. She wanted to take you to the hospital to make sure that I wasn't cheating. Okay, did you tell him you were going to take it? I sure did. I'm just curious. What you going to say? Because they going to say, what's your emergency? What do you say to that? I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna make up something for them to check him. You know, Mr. Cutler, I, I think we might have enough. What, what we got here? Well, we've got cheating in the past, uh, yes. which he admitted to, and they apparently worked through that, but it's still in the back of Miss 
Newton's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we found we have the gold earrings that were found in the car that he came forward and gave to her, but she still wants to know well, where they come from. And we have the lubricant on his privates. Lubricant versus lotion. Lubricant versus lotion. <laughs> and we have him being at the neighbor's house uh, and not telling her. And then, you know, him trying to prevent a scene, which obviously uh, has led to her suspicions that he's cheating. All right. Well, this court has done a complete and thorough investigation. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko and certified polygraph examiner Kendall Shul to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Rob, would you the court... <laughs> How are you both? Great, Your Honor. How are you? Honor. We're good. So, we conducted both an interrogation and a polygraph examination on Mr. Newton. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. All right. So, Ms. Cisco, what did you do to determine about these gold earrings we've been hearing about? When I asked the accused about the gold earrings, he became very animated. So, he was talking with his hands. He actually leaned up into my space, and he gave me direct eye contact. And with conviction, he told me, I have no idea where these earrings came from. I saw no signs of deception, and I believe he was telling the truth. All right. <laughs> but, Mr. Shul, you also asked him when your wife found gold hoop earrings in your car, were those earrings left by a woman with whom you had had physical sexual contact? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> Ms. Cisco, in your investigation, what did you determine happened regarding the night that he was with his friends, over at his friend's house. When I started asking Mr. Newton about this accusation, he laughed out of embarrassment because he told me that he was embarrassed that this was gonna come up in court. He admitted that there were about four or five girls in the house, but when I asked him over and over again, was he with a woman with conviction, he told me no, he had congruent body language, and again, I saw no signs of deception. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him a polygraph question regarding that same evening, correct? I did, Your Honor. Right. You asked him, the night your wife picked you up from your friend's house and confronted two women in the house, did you have sexual intercourse with either of those women on that night? What was his response to that question? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Uh -huh. I'm still not seeing a smile on Ms. Newton's face. <laughs> I think she still needs to be convinced. Okay. <laughs> what did you determine about Mr. Newton and this female neighbor that we've heard about? When I asked him specifically if he had had sex with the female neighbor, he immediately leaned back in his chair and he crossed his arms and his right leg began to shake and he pursed his lips. When I asked again, what happened with that neighbor? He said nothing. But as he said nothing, he shrugged his shoulders. So that is a universal sign for uncertainty. And as he did that, as soon as he ended, he flashed contempt on his face. It's that half smile that looks like a smirk. Oftentimes, after a person lies, they will flash that. And so in that case, I saw numerous indicators of deception, and I do not believe he's telling the truth. So his mouth is saying one thing, his body's saying something completely different. Correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Shaw, you asked him about the neighbor. You asked, have you had sexual intercourse with the female neighbor whose house your wife caught you leaving? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Newton. That's crazy, man. It is crazy, but what happened with the neighbor? We never had sex. Sexual contact, kissing, hugging, petting, everything but? None of that. You were asked one other question. You were asked, since you've been married, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Mrs. Newton? 
Mr. Shull, what was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> Ms. Newton, you came here for the truth. You've gotten at least those answers. Well, I'm not okay with the lying. I just want him to tell the truth. Because I would tell him the truth without him asking me. You all have known each other for 20 years. You're dating, you're living together. But this relationship has hit a snag. And whether that snag gets worked out depends on what happens in this courtroom today. Uh, Mr. Ducharme, what's on the line here? What's on the line today is this relationship's on the line today. Like, it's a lot of things go on. And I don't look for it, but, like, I can't help but to notice. Like, sometimes maybe she might have, like, a hickey here. And then she have a hickey here. I'm like, girl, is this a hickey? She's like, nah, I ain't no hickey, man. That's just something. Or... So what does all this lead you to believe? She spent all this time with these extra fellows. And, like, I just need to know what kind of actions is going on with these fellows. Because uh, she claims innocent, but I claim wrong. All right, Miss Daly, why is this... Why is your being here important to you? To prove to him that his imagination runs really wild, like those hickeys, because that's something you do in junior high. Okay. I don't have any. You don't have, like, a traveling birthmark that just no. moves from place to place, do you? I have three birthmarks, and not only one resembles a hickey. Okay. <laughs> the other two are, are light brown. Like, okay. Yeah. Mr. Deshaun, how, how did you two meet? How did you all get together? Okay, Judge, we met about 20 years ago. We <laughs> ran with the same circle, and, uh, it was always like, uh, she was just too busy for me back then, like, over the last 20 years, and then, uh, we came over at a mutual friend's house and uh, we ran into each other again. And uh, I guess she had time for me this time. Said about three words to her and it was over after that. It was on? Yeah. It only took you three words? Yeah, about three hot words. She said, it's gonna be 90 days before we make anything happen, which was cute to me. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he did not so, say that was cute to me. It was, All right. And I'm like, man, I'm kind of old for this, but we could try. Because <laughs> that was my question. Did, did you start off thinking, okay, but then sometime during you're like, we're not going to make it 90 days? No, or I'm from the right. beginning where you were like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Okay, whatever. Hey, Judge, it was cute. It was cute. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, so, you know, so, inquiry minds want to know yeah. how many days of the 90 days did y'all make it? <laughs> seven. <laughs> seven? That's a lie. <laughs> you said I'm seven? Lying. You said <laughs> seven? Yeah. Okay. That's a lie. I was like, yeah. uh, wait a minute. Look, we didn't have... That's a week. That's, that's a week. That's, that's a week. not bad. You can take me back to court. We can test it. He just wants to make it that answer, then that's all about to make it. Okay, nine, maybe. It was... Maybe nine. Well, here's the thing. We have folks come in here. They don't make it past half an hour. So, yeah. you know, the fact y'all got the nine days or seven days, eh. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Mr. Taylor, I'm almost impressed. <laughs> so, 20 years of admiring her and thinking, hmm, you make this connection, what has happened to bring you to couples court? Okay, so, the first thing that happens is, uh, we were hanging out one time, we were at a friend's house, and her phone, it, her phone turned up missing. Okay. So, we used my phone to track her phone. Okay. And it all worked out, we ended up getting her phone back, and also ends well, but we get back to the house, and, and she pitches a fit, and stomps off, and she takes off. Well... Okay. After a little while, like, I started thinking, well, where'd the girl go? And, uh, oh, find my phone. So I go ahead, I open my phone back up, and I'm like, man, I've got you now. And, and uh, <laughs> I find her iPhone again. Well, man, it says she's at a motel on the southwest side. And I said, oh. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I'm already in the car at this point, on my way to the motel. Like, I'm a, I know you're there. So here I come pull up to the motel, and I see her car. So I send another message. I said, uh, babe, what's the room number? You know, and she don't reply. I don't get a response. I said, what, baby, you're not happy to see me? You know what I mean? I came all the way down here to catch up with you. No reply. So I'm not gonna sit there and just drag this out. If she wanna reply, I'm gonna just move around and I'll deal with it later, whatever the case may be. So about 15 minutes after I leave from the hotel, now all of a sudden her iPhone password is changed. The email password is changed. And when she checks in later, I said, uh, you didn't see the messages? She said, what messages? Well, obviously, you're on your phone changing your passwords. How you didn't see the messages? So, hold on. Let me, I need to talk to Miss Staley. Miss Staley, were you at a motel after this fight? Uh, yes. And, and they had other people there. So, it wasn't just you in the hotel room. It was other people? Yes. And this person? Yes. Why didn't you respond to Mr. Ducharme's because I was happy. messages? Because <laughs> I know what he's doing while I'm gone, looking for me. You like that? Yeah. So, you were at a hotel with this friend, and how many people were there in the room that you were in? Um, like, four. And did okay. they stay there all night with you? No, I wasn't there uh, all night. 
How many men, how many women? Uh, they're girls. Mm. Other than the guy whose room it is, there's the girls. Okay. You say you didn't stay there all night. Did you ever go and spend the night anywhere, go to sleep? No. No, you didn't. Oh, man. You're saying no. this to me like I, I shouldn't have an expectation I... that you went to sleep. People go to sleep. Right. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> okay. You had like, no. Like, <laughs> why would I go to sleep? Well, yeah. it's 3 in the morning. That's what people do. Right, right. No, I left there when oh, he fell man. asleep. But it was... All right. But... So she calls you a day or two later. It's like, hey, babe. And, like, no. nothing's happened, I correct? Don't, I don't exactly call right, him. Yeah. And so you, you take her back, I guess, because you're here. Right. What else have you seen that makes you believe that she's cheating? Okay, the second example... Okay, so after all that happens, I was like, maybe we just need vacation. So we rent... We go to this little beach house. We get a beach house for a few days, and, uh... And we're out there, and we have a private pier. And she's like, man, my ex would love this place because he loves to fish. And, and, like, she said her ex, right? And, like, so I'm like, yeah, okay, well, tell him to come on. I'm not tripping. He's a fisherman. I understand. He want to fish? Come fish. We got a private pier. It's nice. Good fishing. So... You that kind of brother. You that kind of man. You were okay with her ex coming? Absolutely, man. I didn't think twice about it. So I'm out, I'm out fishing and I come inside the house, right? And I guess she doesn't hear me come back inside the house, right? And she's in the tub having this conversation. Talking about, uh, no, he ain't gonna be here. Just come over. It'll just be us. Uh, he'll be out fishing with old man all night long. Uh, Aaron, uh, uh. that's not true. Hold on, Miss Staley. Uh, okay, so long story short, my friend says, do you want me to come get you? Because I explained to my friend what I'm hearing and, like, I probably should just remove myself from the situation because I don't want this to escalate into something. I'm just gonna let it play out and see how it goes because I have a feeling, and generally I'm right. So... <laughs> All right, I, I, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna ask you some yes or no questions, okay? Did you have a conversation with this friend? He called to say he's bringing a computer part for Aaron. Okay. Did you tell him to come by the house because, uh... No, I said... Mr. He, Deshaw won't I, be there. I said the door's open. He can come by and bring the computer part. I didn't say I was... I was gonna go fishing, too. That doesn't take 25 minutes to conversate about in the bathroom. Like, you're gonna I was bring on the phone okay, for 25 minutes. Board, boom, got it. Nobody was on the phone for 25 minutes. Were well, you at the same beach people. house? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Right? That's what I'm trying to say. What happens after all that? Okay, well, while I was gone from the beach house, uh, the ex shows up, right? There, he could probably tell you what happened while I was gone. All right, would you step to the podium, please? <clears throat> would you state you, you, your name? You Ron, can stay, still stand next Ron, to it. Ron Rougeau. Ron, Mr. Rougeau. What's what? the nature of your relationship? I, I dated her for a year and a half before he did. Okay, so okay. you're her ex? Yeah. Okay. Oh! When I show up at the beach house, I brought a girl with me. Okay. I'm not stupid. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, I wasn't gonna get, uh, I wasn't gonna get caught up in this. Okay, are you the, <laughs> are you the ex that she wanted to come to the beach house? Yeah. This is the fisherman. Yeah, I'm the fish. I like. To You're fish. the fisherman. She, she, she knew I like to fish, so she she invited me to come up there because he liked to fish. We thought we'd be maybe fish right, fish right. We did. We fished the whole time. And then um, later on, you know, she she leaves. There comes a luxury car. She she leaves with this guy in the car. Miss Daly does. Yeah, she takes off and leaves with this guy in the car, and then um. Then, then, well, I stay fishing. Me and my girlfriend, we party around the house. We're the only ones there in this big <laughs> house, chilling out. You know, and you were like, this is great! I get in the jacuzzi, get in the jacuzzi. We have a blast, you know? Then I go out there fishing. <laughs> and then he, he shows up later on. Here he comes. So we go right back to the river, start fishing again, you know what I mean? But then, oh, my phone's going off. It's, it's, it's texting, you know, every 30 minutes or something. She's, she's, she, Meg is texting me. She's saying, is Aaron there yet? Has he showed up yet? Has he come back yet? So he goes, he goes, just don't respond, man. I said, okay. Put it back in my pocket and kept on fishing. Mr. Duchar, did Mr. Rougeau ever tell you he saw Miss Staley leaving a luxury car with another man? Yes, uh, Your Honor, he did. When I, when I first got back to the beach house the next day... Uh-huh. And when I went to get my stuff that I had left there... Uh-huh. And I said, uh... I said, so Megan left? And he said, uh, yeah, she left with an old boy that came by. Did you care that she left? I mean, yeah. what? I thought coming, Judge. Like I said, I heard the conversation. Like, I know what's coming next. So I just... So you just so... got... You just went to the fishing. I went to the fishing. <laughs> Mr. Right. Rougeau, you, you may have a sit down. Um, so thank Ms. you, sir. So, Miss Staley, did you leave the beach house in a luxury car no. with a man who came to pick you no. up? I left in my luxury car. With by a... myself. By yourself? With all my stuff. They all completely... Them. They couldn't even fit a person in there other than me. So you weren't with a man while you were at the beach house? No, no. And, and no man came to pick you up? Nobody came to pick me up. Okay, Mr. Deshar, she, according to your testimony, because I don't think y'all are on the same planets, but that's fine. <laughs> but you're, according to your testimony, she left with a guy, you fished, and then you eventually left, right? 
Y yes, Judge. Okay. How did you all get back together? Well, once I leave the beach house, she doesn't call, she doesn't text, like, hey, baby, coming back? Hey, where are you? How long? <clears throat> okay, about nine days she's gone. You go for nine... Y'all are separated for nine days. You don't hear hide or oh, hair no, no, from no. her. I hear plenty because I... Like, I know we have a bunch of mutual friends. So here we go about nine days later. I hear she gets in a car wreck, flips her car. So I'm thinking... Her car? I thought her car, but it turns out, no. She was in the luxury car with the same man. And she's in a car wreck and it flips? Yeah, flipped about nine times, yeah. Okay. It's Is this true? But you were in a car wreck? Yes. Okay, that's the only thing you all agreed to besides <laughs> the fact that y'all here. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So you find out she's in a wreck. What happened when you saw her again, and what was that circumstance? A week later. Okay, when I saw her again was... A week later. How many days? Shh. Man, it, it was probably at least nine days. Okay, so nine days later, you see her. Uh, During those nine days, she's, like, laid up in these hotels with him throughout the whole time. Oh, uh, you're... Okay. All right. Okay, all right. Now, what's your side of the story? When, after the beach house... Yeah. A couple days later, yes, I got into the car accident. Okay. So, game over. I'm going to a hotel. So, did you go to a hospital? No, um, there was uh, a little incident with that. I sent the ambulance away. I didn't go. And so, you go to a hotel at that point with this man. To, yeah, to get the glass out of my... Instead of everywhere. a hospital. Right, because that's what you do when you have glass in your body, mm -hmm. Mr. Cutler. You go right. to a motel. You, you don't have insurance. <laughs> okay, so do you spend the night in the hotel with this gentleman? No, because I'm gone most of it. What do you mean you're gone most of it? When I, when I came back, he's asleep. I take a bath. I wake up, he's still asleep. So then I'm, I'm going downstairs for breakfast. So you did spend the night? But he's not, yeah, we're not even, it's like we have two different rooms. Where do two different rooms come in? No, it's like, it's like, is this if we do? Because he's, he's doing his own thing. He's just a friend. Jeez. I can't be in a hotel with a friend. Okay. okay. We're not saying that you can't. We're asking right. you, did you stay yes. in the hotel room with him? Yeah. Okay, okay. so one not room. With him. One room. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's like, Here's the key. I have a key. We come and go. It's our friends. Okay. How many nights did you spend in the hotel with One. this One. And if I was even there the whole night, no. Okay. The eight days... The eight days before your arrest in this hotel, where no. were you? I was at my roommate's or my family member. Are you saying that you were not with this other no. man during that time period? No. You did not have sex with this gentleman? Hell no. And you have not cheated on Mr. Ducharme? Never. All right. Mr. Right. Carla, I don't think I can stand any more evidence. All right. So, with that said... We need some help getting to the bottom of this. <laughs> and fortunately, this court has done a full and a complete investigation to get to the bottom of this. At this time, the court will call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Ron, please escort Ms. Sisko in. Lena Sisko. Good day, Ms. Cisco. How are you? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's good to see you. Good. Good to see you. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a former military interrogator certified by the Department of Defense. And shortly after 9-11, I was mobilized and deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Since that time, I have been working with and training law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and government agency personnel in interview and interrogation techniques. Tell us, please, what you did to investigate this case. So I had the accused write a witness statement, and she was good because she provided a lot of details in that. And so I went through it, analyzed it for any indicators of deception and truthfulness, and I put together an interview strategy. And then I interviewed Ms. Staley to see if she was cheating on Mr. Duchamp. What did you learn about Ms. Staley when Mr. Mm -hmm. Duchamp tracked her to the hotel? So, Ms. Staley did admit to me that she likes to play games on Mr. Ducharme. So, she will purposely disappear on him because it makes him come find her. And so, she likes that. She wants to feel wanted and needed. And she told me that the time that he had come to the motel, that she even did a victory dance because she was so happy as if to say, you know what, I got him. He did come find me, so I must mean something to him. Okay. What did you find out about Miss Staley's guy friend from the beach house? 
When I asked her if she had sex with this guy, she jumped up out of the chair and cursed and said no. She kept stopping me and went through a whole entire list of details of what happened in that three day period. And I was a little exhausted because like what you heard here, it was a little confusing, but I got to the bottom of it. What was your overall opinion about Miss Staley? Miss Staley is over the top in love with Mr. Ducharme, and she even told me that this guy is her soulmate. So I do not believe she's cheating on him, and I believe she's being truthful. All right. <laughs> well, Mr. Ducharme, you came here to get some answers. You've gotten those answers. Turns out that Miss Staley has not been cheating. What is the future of your relationship with Miss Staley? <clears throat> I guess it can get better from here. Okay. Well, uh, I think you all could work on communication skills yeah. with each other. You think? I, yeah, that would be my, you know, suggestion. Yeah. That you yeah. all like, work on I'm communicating a, a to each other. Uh, and, right. and, and that's gonna be the first like step for you all building together. You all have been together for seven years. You've got two kids together. But this beautiful relationship is in jeopardy of ending. Miss Serta, tell me your story. Why are you here? I'm here. Well, first of all, we have a secret. We have been married. We got married, secretly married in last December. Oh. None of our family or friends know, but this man still thinks he's single, and oh. I think he's cheating on me. She keeps accusing me every single day of cheating. It's a constant argument, cheating all the time. She thinks I'm cheating every Which day. Which she has. Um, I, have, I, I will admit, I have in my past, but ever since getting married, I, I have not. And I have said that to her multiple, multiple, and multiple times. He's lying. Every he day, it's the he same argument, the same thing. She doesn't believe you? No. At all. What kinds of things is she doing? She says that I keep my phone a secret because I'm which cheating. Which she does. He always which keeps I feel like I'm entitled to have my phone. I share. 99.9% .9 of my life with her. I feel like I'm entitled to have that 0.1% that, that part of my life that I feel like I'm entitled to. And, and but oh, whenever to I try to have my well, phone back, it's a big issue. Hold on. Here's the problem. If, she, if she's already suspicious of you, and then you keep this one piece where anybody and everybody can reach out to you, do you understand why that would make her suspicious? and think that, okay, why are you hiding this? But it's just, he said 99.9. .9. He's talking about 0.01%. He can't have that to himself? Oh, you know, well, color, some he, things are private. I mean... Uh, uh, but what? he's already admitted that he cheated in the past, and that has made her suspicious, and now he has a lock on the phone. Miss Sutter, am I right? Yes. And tell me how you found out he cheated. I found out because one day he just texted me. He was out with his friends and he texted me and he admitted to me that he was cheating on me. I did it through text because me finding out she was pregnant and me being so young and still being in school, you know, I, I had a lot going through my head. I, I was not prepared, you know, to become a dad. I was, I was scared. But the thing is, I mean, text messages may not be the best way to do it, but you did it. Yes. And from that point forward, you're, like, you're saying you haven't cheated anymore. I have not cheated. You've been faithful Ever to since her. she got pregnant, I have not cheated. I've been faithful. I have not lied. I have not done a single thing. But apparently there's some warning signs flashing. Yeah, he's... And I want you to tell me about those warning signs that you see. He's very secretive about his phone. He always has it locked. And whenever he doesn't have his phone with him, he starts freaking out about it. Like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? And... But don't we all do that? I mean, yeah. I know some people who, I mean, they can't go like five minutes without their phone. Oh, I mean, okay. I thought you were getting ready to talk about me, Mr. Keller. I'm not throwing any stones. I'm just speaking generally. So you... There are lots of people who just can't be without their phone. We know people like that. Am I one of those people, Mr. Cutler? So what specifically did you find in this phone? <laughs> I, I see you not seeing me. Okay, we'll, we'll right. talk about that later. All right, all right. 
right. So, Ms. Serta, what specifically did you find in his phone? Uh, there was one day that he left his phone on the table, and it just so happened that I was walking by, and I heard that he had a notification. And it just so happens that it was a text message um, where you usually put the name of the person. It just had, like, a whole bunch of heart emojis. And I was like, oh, hey, like, Your what Honor, is this? That, that and message. Hold on, hold on. And the text message said, I miss you, too. We can't wait to see you. But I was you, like, that is not a family member. That is not me. You actually submitted your recollection yes, to I did. court. Is that correct? Yes, I okay. did. So is that what you remember seeing? Yes. And this person wrote to him, I miss you too. Can't wait to see you. Yes. Mm-hmm. That Mr. Message... Reyes, who is the heart, 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 I miss you too? That's a family member. That message... You wouldn't talk to a family that member like that. That's kind of weird. a family member that I have not seen in years. Uh -huh. No. And we were just going to go true. out to dinner. No. But Mr. Reyes, is, is there any reason you couldn't save the person's name? You couldn't save it as, you know, Mary or... Sally or I was I was driving the day that I got the phone so sure, the emoji yeah. keyboard yeah, was you, just on you, so you couldn't have changed it that. after you know and I for, I forgot I forgot to switch it okay color you got any the female relatives that you gonna have heart smiley heart 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 a hearty yeah. heart heart are only, you a, only you only me only you uh huh. Yeah. I'm just but, but But, you know, his story is real slick. It's like, well, I just sent her that, so that was what was in the recently used category. That's and that's not it. He constantly wants to have sex with me every day, but I have two children, and it can be stressful because I take care of them all day, and sometimes I'm just tired, and he wants sex every single day, and sometimes I just want to rest. Okay, but Ms. Serta, <laughs> uh... <laughs> now, this, this may be a guy perspective, but I'm just gonna ask you... <laughs> What's wrong with him desiring you? And why does that make you think he's cheating? Because he... when Sometimes when he's really mad, he will text me and say things to me that if I don't give him what I want, that that's why girls end up uh, getting cheated on. And he, he needs to understand that sometimes I just need a break. Like, I am a mom, and it's, it's very stressful sometimes, and I'm tired. When I get angry... Well, I, I do know sometimes my temper can get out of control. Okay, Ms. Serta, you have submitted those to the court, yes. is that right? Yes. All right, let's take a look at those. This is a text exchange between you and your husband, and Mr. Reyes wrote, and you went to the room and nothing. We have sex at the most maybe sometimes twice a month, but not any more than that. It's getting old, and I'm pretty damn tired of it. Like I said, it's you type of stupid blank girls that end up getting cheated on. Oh. And then it goes on. And like I said, do not be surprised the day you get cheated on. Oh. And you responded, I won't be surprised. It'll be nothing new. Because yeah. you're like, He's been done there, done that. Yeah. So you're threatening your wife, look, if I don't get it from you, I'm going to get it from yeah. somewhere else. That's basically what you're telling her, isn't it? We've been married for four or five months. We should be having sex all the time. We have sex <laughs> twice a month, on a good month. Well, Mr. I, Kyler, I'm gonna let you talk to him. I'm gonna let you talk to him, because... Well, I can't say I disagree with him. I mean, there's a thing about <laughs> newlyweds and, you know... I mean, look, if not at their age, when? I mean, really. Uh, Kyler, two babies. Two! I understand that, but that's not the issue. The issue is, you threaten your wife that, look, if you don't you know, come to me more frequently, then I'm going out and cheating. And now yeah. she suspects that you have done that. Because and that is the problem. Because sometimes so, that's what it takes. Well, but look where it's gotten you. Yeah. Look where it's gotten you. She now thinks you're cheating because you threatened to do it. So, Ms. Serta, why do you think he's cheating? He just recently started going out on drives. And it's usually for two hours. And before he even leaves on a drive, he takes a shower, he does his hair, and he puts cologne on. I'm like, okay, if you're going to go drive and you're going to go be by yourself, why would you need to shower and put on a lot of cologne, you know? And so you think he's getting pretty and getting yeah. fancy for yes. somebody else. Yes. I just need a break. There's times where I can't take it anymore and I need a break. So my way of removing myself from the situation so I don't start to argue with her and so my kids don't see us argue, I leave. Yeah, but you don't I need to get ready drive. to go out on a drive. I, I feel so Mr. like but if Mr. I Rez, want to... I get that. I understand that. But are you going for a ride or are you going out to nope. give somebody else a ride? No. I'm going out for a ride. For a ride. 
have you found anything else that would make you or support your suspicion yes. that he's cheating? Yes. Tell um, me about that. One time he had lost his ID and he asked me if I could go into his car to go get it. And me being a good wife, I went to his car and looked for it. Uh huh. And I was looking through it and it just so happened that I found a condom. And I was oh. very, very mad because we never use condoms. We have never used condoms. Even before we had kids, after kids, up until now, we don't use condoms. So I was like, this is not ours, so who could it be? Who are you using this condom with? I have no idea what she's talking about. Oh. I have never seen the condom. There's no reason why I would have it there. It's your car. So, Ms. Serdit, we need evidence. Did you bring that condom to court No, today? I don't have it, but I have these. I also found these. These are earrings. Okay. I Ron, could you grab those for us, please? Yes, yeah, Sean. Sure. And so where did you find these earrings? Uh, it was a different day. He asked me to go get some papers in his car. Your Honor. So th th these know. are definitely earrings? ladies' I earrings. These do not are know not mine. Whose earrings those are. I believe they are a family member's earrings. No. My car no. is a family car. Multiple people are in my car every single day. But I have not never just seen any earrings. Someone could have taken off their earrings, left them in the cup no, holder. I mean, this is, this is clearly a woman's that. earring. I mean, if I... Yeah. I mean, that... No, that doesn't that's go. not your look. That's not, no, that doesn't go. This is a woman's earring. So have you asked the family members, are these your earrings? Yes, and they've said no. Whose earrings are these? Uh, family members, I don't know. I let multiple family but members But she's already drive said that car. family members... Well, she probably didn't ask all of them. So how... <sighs> you know what? Here's the deal. We wanted to talk to an expert who's been in your shoes. She's the MTV reality star of Teen Mom 3 founder of Body by Mac, and she's going to share her experiences of being a young wife with young kids and a young husband. We're bringing in Mackenzie McKee. Ron, would you escort her in, please? Yes, Sean. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Good, it's good to have you here. Good to see you. Could you share with them your struggles and your relationship um, when you were a young couple starting out? Yes. Um, I met my boyfriend. We were 15 and 16, and we were babies, wow. thinking we knew what love was when we had no clue. And we got pregnant really quick and had our son. And within a year, we had both cheated on each other. And making it through that was hard. As a young couple, how did you get past those issues? We actually had a shotgun wedding like you guys. We got married behind everyone's backs and we got married not forgiving each other yet. And so what we had to do was we took a you know solid three months without talking to each other to work on ourselves. You have to love yourself and you have to work on yourself. <laughs> and if it's meant to be, you're gonna find your way back to each other but you have to come clean. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Yes. I'm glad we brought you here. I'm glad you were able to give some information to our couples that uh, they can use. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ron, we just scored it back out to you. <laughs> well, you just heard Ms. McKee say the key to this is for everybody to come clean. Once you come clean, you can start fresh and move forward. So with that advice, is there anything that you need to come clean about in your relationship with Ms. Serta? Nothing. You've come clean about everything you I've need to come clean her about. Everything I've ever done. All right. Color, he said it. It's time to gain additional clarity. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call licensed and certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine is he cheating? <laughs> Would you, for the court record, state your credentials? I have 30 years experience in the United States military and as a police officer. I've been a poly polygraph examiner for 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 examinations. You asked Mr. Reyes, are you spending romantic time with anyone other than Ms. Serter while out on your long drive getaways? What was Mr. Reyes' response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined 
that he was being truthful. I see you concentrating. Do you feel a little better, Ms. Serta? Yes, a little bit. Okay. You asked Mr. Reyes, since August 2015, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than Ms. Serta? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. I actually... Mr. Reyes, I asked you. We had Ms. McKee here telling you that the key to all this was to come clean. And I gave you a chance. And now we found out that you've been deceptive. What have you done? I had sex with somebody else. Um, ever since we got married, I took those vows seriously. Um, the day we got married, that's the day that I told myself that I was going to change. I was going to finally grow up and be the man you wanted me to be and the father you wanted me to be. And since the day that we got married, I have not done anything. I will never do anything. I have been 100% completely honest with you ever since the day we got married and... Mr. Reyes, enough. Enough. Does she have stupid written on her face? No. Do I have stupid written on my face? No. What? You are lucky. I don't bounce you right up out of here. That's crazy if you think she's just gonna go, okay. Miss Sir, I'm looking at you and, and it's I'm probably so sorry. all you can do to hold it together. I'm just watching your face and, you know, it's gotta be devastating for you. How do you feel in this moment? I feel hurt. Tell him how you feel. I feel her. I really love you, and I just never thought you would do something like that to me. We have kids together. And I thought you would respect me as your wife and as the mother of your kids, and you would never do that to me. I'm really hurt. Tell him what you want. I don't want to be with you. I want to file for a divorce. I've had enough. 